Hey YouTube, in this problem we have a group G and x, y, two elements of G. We have to prove that if either 1, x times y is equal to e, which is the identity, or 2, y times x is equal to e, then y is the inverse of x. So first let's recall what it means for y to be the inverse of x. So recall y is the inverse of x if, if you take x times y, you get e, and if you take y times x, you get e. Notice I'm omitting the multiplication symbol in this video. Um, I think up until now I had been using star for multiplication. I decided at this point maybe to drop it, so the multiplication is implied. So this is basically asking us to prove that if we have a so-called one-sided inverse, that it's essentially a two-sided inverse. So, uh, so if we can show that the inverse works for only one equation, then it works for both, and we have a genuine inverse. So proof. So we'll start by supposing that one holds. So suppose one holds. We're going to be very, very careful in this proof. We're going to justify every detail. So this means that x, y is equal to e. Okay. Now we have to show that y is the inverse of x. That means we have to show that y, x is equal to e. Right? We've already got this one. We just need to show this one. So then, then, so we, na we naturally start by looking at um, yx. So then yx is equal to, okay, so we somehow have to use the condition that x times y is equal to e, right? So here we have an x, so it'd be nice to have a y next to it on the right. So what we'll do is we'll start by inserting the identity element there. Okay, so we have yx e, and this is because e is the identity element. Identity element, I'll spell it. And again, we want a, um, a y here so we can use our condition. So we can write this as yx and then y, y inverse. And this is because y inverse is the inverse of y. Okay. And now we're going to use uh, associativity very, very carefully, right? So this is going to be, let's see, um, we want to use associativity on these elements. This will be, we're going to use it on this one, this one, and this one. This will be y, parentheses, x, y, y inverse, parentheses, parentheses, right? And let me just clarify this. This takes some practice. This is a, b, c. So this is a, b, and this piece here is c. So we're saying that a, b times c is the same as a times b, c. Again, a, b times c is the same as a times b, c takes a lot of practice to get good at this. So this is because, or not, not because, by associativity. By associativity. Then we're going to use associativity one more time. It's a little bit easier to see in this case. This is y parentheses, and then it's, and then it's parentheses x, y times y inverse parentheses. Okay. This is by associativity. And then we know, and I can barely see it, but that says x, y. Um, x, y is equal to e, so this is y, parentheses, e, y inverse. Right, so this piece here is e. So this is because uh, x, y is equal to e. And then e times y inverse, well, that's just uh, y inverse, so you get y, y inverse. And this is because e is the identity. e is the id element. And then y times y inverse is equal to e. This is because y inverse is the inverse of y. Okay? So this shows 
this shows that uh, yx yx is equal to e, right? So we started uh, with xy equal to e, and uh, then we showed that yx is equal to e. So this means that. And what did we have to show? We had to show that y is the inverse of x. So that y is the inverse of x. Okay. Let's show the other one. Um, so I'll be a little bit quicker on this one. So suppose two hold. So suppose yx equals e. So suppose two hold. So this means yx equals e. Now we have to show that xy is equal to e. So then xy, and then this time I'm not going to write down um, the reasons. I'm just going to say them in words. So again, we have yx equals e, okay, and we want to show that xy is equal to e. All right, so the idea here is that we want a y here, right? We need a y here. So what we'll do is we'll put an e there first. This is e, x, y. We can do that because e is the identity. And again, we want a y here so we can use the fact that yx equals e. So what we'll do is we'll write this as uh, y inverse y, x, y. And this is because y inverse is the inverse of y. Okay. And now we'll use a substitutivity okay, on, uh, let's see, on which elements we're going to do that on this one, this one, and um, this one. So this will be parentheses y inverse y x y. Then we'll use the substitutivity one more time. This will be y inverse y x parentheses parentheses y. Y x is equal to e. This is y inverse e times y. E is the identity. This is y inverse y. Y is the inverse of y, so this is equal to e. Did that really fast? So therefore, x, y is equal to e. We had y, x equals e, so this shows that y is the inverse of x. Inverse of x. So it's essentially saying that whenever you have a one-sided inverse, you have the inverse, right? So kind of nice. So if you have x, y equal to e, then we know yx is also going to be equal to e, and so y is the inverse of x. Likewise, if yx is equals to e, equals e, then we know that xy equals e, therefore y is the inverse of x. So it's enough to show a one-sided inverse to show a genuine inverse. That's what this is saying. I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching.